Hello everyone, you're listening to Scientific Healing with Dr. Anastasia Choplis. I know the power of vibrational healing, and by combining physics and ancient healing arts to develop a system that has amplified results with thousands of my clients and healing students. When you are ready to be able to transform your life and the life of others, go to scientifichealer.com forward slash energize me to discover more about my program for helping healers and coaches thrive and grow their business. I invite you into a conversation at scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment to talk to you about having more energy while growing your healing and coaching practice. Today, I am so very pleased to introduce you to J.V. Crum III. Right now, if you were to see J.V. Crum and meet him, you'd find that he is a um, highly educated person with formal legal business and psychology training and multiple certifications in NLP. He's very well known in the podcasting radio world. He has a very popular syndicated podcast, Conscious Millionaire, airing seven days a week in 190 countries to over 12 million listeners. And that he just turned his 1500th episode. And that's in only about three years, right, JP? Well, actually, actually four years right now. And we're so excited about that because now we're looking towards the future, what comes next. Mm -hmm. And actually, in just a couple of months, we'll have everything divided so that we'll have a total of seven podcasts Five days a week, we're syndicated on radio. I'm working with a major radio station about creating a, a, a show on business that would be on terrestrial radio. And what really excites me is the opportunity to work with high performers, people who they've had success and now they want to perform at a higher level and specifically high performers that want to make a big impact and they want to turn that big impact into big money and the big fulfillment that they want in life. And I think that's a magical formula. That's the core of everything we do at Conscious Millionaire. And it excites me literally every morning to get up. You can see the smile on my face. To get to work with people who want to make a big wave with their life. They want to make this impact. They want to make a difference. And they want to be wealthy. You know, because it's time for people who are making an impact to stop playing this poverty game. I, right? I completely agree with that. You I'm don't have to be poor because you're a good person. In fact, I think <laughs> the good people should be the ones inheriting the earth. And th that means that, that this new model, what I call conscious millionaire, of how to do business is about being conscious. And because you're conscious, also building the business in a way that makes you the millions, makes you financially successful while you're making your powerful difference in the world. Exactly. So you, you started out in very humble beginnings and decided at the age of five, was it, to become five. a millionaire? Right. <laughs> That's so awesome. I decided at the age of seven to become a scientist. <laughs> I should have asked to be a millionaire scientist. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, at five, I decided to do two things. Uh, and uh, I decided to be a millionaire and go to med school. And when I got uh, through most of my pre-med, I said, you know what? I don't think I want to do the med thing, but I'm still into this. Let's become a millionaire thing. Because <laughs> At that point, I was 19 and at 25, I'd made my first million. You know, having financial success makes the biggest difference in people's lives because while it's true, money's not going to buy happiness. Money will buy a lot of peace of mind and it buys you the ability to access events, to access experiences like taking your family on an amazing vacation and, and staying in great places and resorts so that your children have experiences. I remember we had nothing, but my parents saved up for an entire year. And my mother's best friend's sister was taking a group of high school students, senior and first year college, going into your senior year, going into your first year college. And I went to Europe for the summer when I was 16. I studied and stayed at Cambridge University, went to Paris, went to the Moulin Rouge. My first museum was the Louvre, and my first symphony was the London Symphony. And I came home and I said, wow, there is nothing in Oklahoma like this. And I think I like that life better. And that set the whole stage. And I know the value of experiences at every stage in your life. They pivot you. Yes, because now you have, you have insights and you, 
you see possibilities and opportunities you didn't see before for yourself and for other people. Yeah. My, my, and wealth, money helps you have yes, those experiences. Yes. Either that or become a scientist where they give you a travel budget. <laughs> And so yeah, I've, never sounds, had, I've never had a travel budget other than the one I created. It's like, how much are you going to spend on travel this year, JV? Well, let's decide how much money you're spending on travel this year. Nobody's ever actually given me the budget. Well, right. So as a scientist, we got to travel. So when my kids were very little, they hopped the Atlantic back and forth like two, three times a year with us. Wow. So that, and, that was a great experience. Yeah, and the thing is that it really broadened their horizons and their ability. Like even when my son was five or six or my daughter was eight or nine, their ability to communicate with adults at a very adult level and to have conversations that are out of this world was just amazing because their horizons had been broadened behind, beyond their little backyard. And, so, and th that's actually what happened to me when I was in Europe, because we also went to uh, Florence, we went to Milan, went to Rome, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I came home and I said, wow, this is a whole nother world. But it was my first time being in different cultures. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, this was amazing because, you know, a lot of Americans are known as the, like the, you know, the kind of rude travelers. And if I was rude, I have no idea, but I got over it when I was 16. And since then, I've traveled the world, and I'm always curious to go places and meet the people and find out about the culture. And I always come home, and I have a different perspective on the world and the world's problems and people. Yes, absolutely. And a lot of times, I would come home and kiss the ground <laughs> when I got here because I was so happy to be home. Wow. Because, right, because uh, it, the cultures are so different all over the place. But when you got to that millionaire place you know when you were in your mid-20s and it was it's been a roller coaster ride ever since right and yeah I've had roller coasters I've had financial roller coasters which I think is common for people I've also <laughs> had health roller coasters mm -hmm. you know this year February 5th I had a major heart attack mm -hmm. and was in ICU for five five days so it, it didn't really hit me how major it was until a couple of weeks ago because now I've gone through the healing part and changed diet and worked out and taking a lot of supplements. And my cardiologist called me at the end of three months, it's been five now, and said, you know, I wanted to personally call you because I'm excited about your results for all practical purposes. Your heart has healed. When I was told at the time of the heart attack, it would never heal. And I told him I will heal because that's what I've decided I'm going to do. And I'm not going to put up with not healing. And I'm not taking these pharmaceuticals for life. So quit telling me I'm going to take this for life. I'm not. Mm -hmm, exactly. I'm, I'm, I think that's, so, that's part of being conscious. It is part of being conscious. But, mm -hmm. you know, the roller coaster that we go on, to me, everything where I've had ups and downs is all part of a personal and spiritual journey that I'm on. Because every time I go to a trough in any area of my life and I go, wow, what happened? The way out of the trough is to do more healing, mm -hmm. to, to reach inside and look at myself in new ways and to say, well, this is a piece that's a block. It's blocking energy. It's blocking health. It's blocking money, whatever it's blocking. And now I do another level of healing, which opens me even more. Exactly. And I think that's a very different way of looking at what we all go through in relationships, whatever area of life. There's nobody listening today that has not had a roller coaster ride where you've had ups and you've had downs. It's, it's kind of the human experience. The real question is not so much what do you do with the ups, what do you do with the downs? I think and, so. And how do you manage those and how do you respond to them and how do you see them? Mm-hmm. Because I can tell you my seeing things like when I was in the hospital with the heart attack. So that was probably the physical most down I'd ever been in my life. And I immediately, when four minutes into being in the emergency room, they'd finished the EKG. Because when I walked in, I said, I think I'm having a heart attack. I wasn't sure because I'd never had one before. But it seems to me like this might be a heart attack, right? And within four minutes, they finished the EKG. They looked at me and they said, sir you were in the middle of a heart attack. Whisked me down the, uh, uh, the aisle and took me, 
the, on the hallway into a room. It was like I was in a TV studio. There were 12 people, each of them poking me with different IVs and all this kind of stuff. And I stopped them about three or four minutes into that. I said, look, I just want everybody here to know I make it and I'm okay. And I want to be sure everybody's on that same page. Then they whisked me up the elevator to the operating room and I stopped them before they got, you know, too far into it. They had me sign the consents and all this kind of stuff. And then they're filling me full of, you know, IBs and stuff. And I said, I want you to understand I'm going to be okay. And then later that night, because it was a Monday night, they took me to ICU. And the first thing I told the nurse, like, I want you to understand I'm going to heal. And I told every doctor who came to see me that same story. And finally, on the fourth day, the, the cardiologist, who well, I'll call him a traditionalist, because he said nothing holistic works. And, you know, he says, I believe in under-expecting healing. I, and he looked at me, brought in this machine. He showed me my, my operation videos. Somebody showed me my echocardiogram. He says, see this part of your heart that's not moving like the rest? And I said, yeah. And he goes, that's damage. And he says, you're never going to heal that. And I'm concerned that you're so optimistic about healing. And I told him, I said, that's because I'm going to heal. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and I did right. Not by magic, but, and partly by you because you've been doing energy healing with me. And I really appreciate that because that's had a major difference. I know that it's had a major difference. And so I think I could have, when I met with my cardiologist and we did another echocardiogram, I looked at him and I said, is this heart attack going to hurt the quality of my life or the longevity of my life? I want to know right now. And he goes, for 90% of the people, yes, but you're the exception. And the reason is you have an attitude that says you're going to heal and you're going to be okay and you're changed your diet and you're working out and you're doing the things that will change your life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. There's nothing magical about J.B. Crum the third. I simply made a decision I would not put up with having a chronic disease and taking these ridiculous pharmaceuticals for the rest of my life and being, quote unquote, you know, having chronic heart disease. I said, I don't want anything to do with that, but I'm willing to change. I'm willing, you know, I'm willing to change diet. I'm willing to change working out. I'm willing to do supplements. I'm willing to do all this, but I'm only willing to be healthy. And that's the only outcome I'll accept. There is no other outcome. And I think that's really the difference. But you know what happened? Yeah, it's two Talk- things. It's two things. One yes. is making the decision, and the second yes. is willing to be uncomfortable. So change. Well, that's true the- because that fourth day, they also told me that I was subject to having a stroke, right? And I immediately told them, I said, you know, I think we should skip the stroke thing because I'm not really interested in having a stroke. But <laughs> I was also, you know, in that moment, taken on with some fear. And so I thought about it, and they said they'd never seen anybody do this so quickly. I thought through it, and I went to a very spiritual place. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling the doctors, the reason I'm going to be okay is that I've got a mission to complete on earth. And in order for me to complete that mission, I have to be here. Therefore, I know I'm going to be here. Now, some of them thought that was great. Others thought I was, you know, perhaps been given a little too much drugs, you know, on the pain area because they thought this was a little crazy, (laughs) but that was the truth. And I went to a spiritual place and I made two decisions that Thursday afternoon. I said, first of all, because I will admit I am an alpha guy and I like to have control and I'm not going to deny that because it's always going to be that way. That's just the way we're built, right? It's who we are. Yes, I said, but for me to have control, I have to accept that I'm not in control. And that was major. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is that I said, I'm going to turn it over to, I call it the universe, right? Mm -hmm. I said, if I'm supposed to be here, then I'm the one who has to change my diet. I'm the one who has to go to the gym. I'm the one who has to take the supplements. I'm the one who has to take care of me. But I can't know what's going to happen with this stroke thing. I can't be in charge of that because I don't have control over that. So I surrendered Mm -hmm. and said, that's not my job. And I'm going to trust that I'll be okay. I just don't know how it happens. Exactly. And then I woke up the next morning in total peace. Yeah. And the thing is, the the total peace is what kept any stroke or anything from happening. Because if the doctor says you're a stroke risk, then most people would go, oh, my God, I'm a stroke risk. And then their blood pressure would go up and boom, they have one. 
Yes. Well, actually, what happened instead was the stroke risk was supposed to last for six months. And at the end of three months, the doctor said, we don't need these blood thinners. We don't need this stuff that, that was keeping you from having a stroke because your risk is gone. Yes. Perfect. I love, I love hearing that story that your heart muscle completely healed and they just don't know. know how. It just healed, you know, like it's, it's a- your, he goes, well, for all practical purposes, your heart's healed. And I said, right. good. Right. So well, now let's heal the rest of my body. So now we're focused on, uh, if you could see my kitchen, I've got five different stacks of tests, two different doctors have sent me that I've got to go to three different labs and send two of them off over the next two weeks. And then we're going to have a meeting, kind of like a little powwow in which, as I say, I think we're going to know more about JV's body than 99% of the people on this planet and make some new decisions about how do I heal completely? How do we get all my systems, my organs all optimized so that what's interesting is that, you know, at one point I was thinking I'd live to 84 and then I thought, well, 93 would be good. And now I, I'm honest, since the heart attack, I actually upped it to 100 because I finally said, well, why don't you just go for 100? You're going to have a healthy body. You've got a lot of experiences you'd like to have. You've got a lot of, you know, impact that you want to make. Why don't you just have a long time to do it? So I love that. You're all about high performance, and this was high performance healing. Go all in. It was was high performance healing, and I am all about high performance. I love people who want to find new summits and go to those next summits because – we, we really have two choices. We can say we're going to go for the max or we're going to settle. And what you settle for, let's just use the word, and I don't mean it politely, mediocrity. Mm-hmm. Do you want to settle for mediocrity or do you want to go for the max? Mm-hmm. You know, I do, I do one of my podcasts is High Performance Mindset. So I'll give you a little, you know, Mm -hmm. There's one coming up that I just recorded uh, two days ago, but it won't be out for a couple of months. And it was on uh, the concept was say yes, right? And you're either saying yes or you're saying no, but we kid ourselves when we say yes, 98% level, that that's a total yes, but it's actually a no because we've still said no to part of what we can have. And I believe that we as human beings can say yes to 100%. And it's amazing when I work with somebody and they say yes to 100%, what you can create in your business, in your life, in your finances, because you've decided to stand up and say, I'm going to have it all. And folks, you can have it all. You simply have to claim it and take action to get there. But that's what high performance is really all about. It's saying yes at 100% level. Well, and that's, that was you with your, you know, you hired a healer, you um, hired a, you know, health coach with terms of what you're eating, you uh, went to the gym, you, you know, told the doctors, I'm getting off all these pills, and I'm going to have a healthy life. And you committed. And and I put together a team of people, Mm -hmm. while three of them were traditionally medically trained, like my cardiologist. But they were also trained in functional medicine because I Mm -hmm. knew that functional medicine was going to take me on a healing journey and traditional medicine. In fact, just two days ago, I had a phone call and someone I've known basically all my life, 68, died of a heart attack. He had his first heart attack 15 years ago, and but he didn't change anything. I said to myself, you know, I was sad, sad, of course, and I said, well, But it didn't uh, affect me in the sense of me being concerned. That was going to be my story because I said he didn't go to the gym. He didn't lose any weight. He didn't really change his diet. And he lived on pharmaceuticals. And from my perspective, pharmaceuticals are designed, and I'm I'm taking some pharmaceuticals right now, but we're on a regimen to get rid of them, not to keep them. Mm -hmm. Pharmaceuticals as a long-term proposition maintain chronic disease states. And I'm personally interested in healing disease states Um, and becoming healthy. The things I'm putting in my body are supplements designed to optimize me. Right. So from my perspective, pharmaceuticals manage symptoms. They don't heal anything. Yeah, I I, I would agree. Right. And in fact, all of them are toxic to the body. 
everyone. There's nothing, there's nothing that's not toxic. And so when you take- We it, just call them polite things legally yeah. called side effects, but it's really, it's toxic and poisoning your body. Right, and the, right? And the, toxic, the toxic effects have long-term effects and no pharmaceutical has really shown to prolong life. I mean, let's look at cholesterol medication. Usually people die of something else at about the same time they would have died of heart disease, <laughs> like diabetes or, you know, muscular or nerve degeneration. There's like so many things, uh, Alzheimer's, it, they all are connected. So, so I, I try to discourage people and I always ask, and I'm, you know, I love the idea that you brought up um, functional medicine. So people that are working in functional medicine help you get off of them. So that was really a wise right. choice. And that's why I've chosen that route because, and that's why we're doing all these tests. In fact, all these tests, I'm having to pay $1,600 for parts of the tests that Anthem won't pay for, even mm -hmm. though I pay them eight fifty a month, which is still crazy. Because all these biomarkers and things that are very reasonable for us to look at, so we know what's going on with JV's body, the insurance company won't even cover. They're tests. These are not woo-woo kind of some, you like going, okay, so they don't believe in ma waving the magic wand maybe. No, these are blood tests. They will not pay for them because they've decided, and all of them are designed to know things so that I can heal. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not to find out what pharmaceutical I need to take next. Exactly. And they won't pay for them. $1,600 worth of them, they literally will not pay for. Yeah, I've paid for a lot of my own tests. And I've also gone to, you know, I've had insurance this whole time, and now I'm on Medicare. <laughs> it's like a joke. I just pay money for something I don't need. <laughs> but <laughs> so now I'm on Medicare, and they don't cover any of those either. And even my doctor, who is an in integrative medicine doctor, they don't pay for it. So I just pay for out of pocket. It's way cheaper than me getting the more expensive insurance. <laughs> Well, so anyway. you know, but that, but that's why I work with high performers because I think we have a different attitude. And if you're listening yes. to this and all of this is resonating with you, then I want to invite you to ask yourself for the next three days, the litmus test, look in the mirror, because I got to tell you, JV is not perfect. And sometimes I have to go, you did not say yes at a hundred percent level. It's time for you to up your game right? We all are constantly in this journey. It's not like you get there and you're a high performer. It's that you're always a high performer evolving to your next level. There is always another level. There's always more of your potential you haven't tapped. There's always another summit that you can go up and that you can make your difference at a bigger level. There's always more money that you could make from the impact you're creating. You know, all of this is just infinite levels. And that's the great thing because I'm going to give you another word for high performers. I think we're the adventure seekers. I think so I too. love an adventurous life. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. It's a roller but I'm not living in fear about it because I know something's going to happen tomorrow. And the chances are some of it's going to be a pretty interesting adventure. Yeah, it reminds who would, me. Who would, who would know, want to know what comes in the next chapter of a book when you're reading the book, right? <laughs> kind of ruins it. I was running a 10K race some years ago, and I had, to, I had to laugh so hard I couldn't run when I saw a gentleman with a T-shirt on that just ran past me and said, there is no finish line. <laughs> <laughs> And it just That's reminded great. me that. And the other one is there is no destination. It's a journey. The destination is the journey. Well, you know, I'm, I haven't talked about this in a long time. Uh, in, in my book, Conscious Millionaire, I actually talk about goals. And one of the things I talk about are compass headings. So listen, folks. You can set a major goal, and it doesn't mean you're going to achieve it and that that's failure. The major goal might be what you need to head forward for three months. Mm -hmm. And then you do something called pivoting. Now, if you're outdoors, because I'm an outdoors guy, and you've got a compass, you've got this compass headed at this mountain peak, right? But you never go in there because when you get three miles from now, you're going to change your compass heading. Mm -hmm. That's called a pivot, right? Except that you've kind of pre-planned that pivot so you can get to some designated outcome because you'd like to camp for the night. But that's different than how we live our lives. And oftentimes we call pivots failures. I failed to get to that goal. 
when the goal achieved what the goal needed to achieve for you. Exactly. All you needed to do was go in that direction for three miles. And then it was time for a pivot. But if you didn't go in that direction for three miles, you'd never gotten to the pivot point. Well, and it's just like hitting the bottom of the roller coaster, right? You, with your health, you hit the bottom of the roller coaster. I had. I definitely hit the bottom of the roller coaster with my health. <laughs> right. So it's part There's of the no ride. Question. So now, so now, this hitting that bottom has prepared you to live another twenty years past where you thought you were going to live. Literally, I think I will live longer than I would have without mm -hmm. a heart attack because. The truth is lots of me was on a downward spiral. You know, it's like I did a show a, a, a week after I got out of the hospital. I took all my energy because I slept most of that week. But I kind of did it in my head over and over and over again. And then I recorded it in one shot. It was a solo show for a half hour called JB's Heart Attack. And you can listen to it at ConsciousMillionaire.com. Be glad for you to go take a listen. And, and I talked about the traditional medicine, the functional medicine, the spiritual journey that was unfolding and deepening in me. Mm -hmm. But I started it, Anna, by saying the truth. I am responsible for my heart attack. This isn't genetic. I was the one who ate too many steaks. It's my fault. And now I'm going to heal. And I said I was going to heal, and I did. But I had to first take responsibility. Nobody, nobody was to blame for this. I did it, but it was that awareness that I did it that gave me the power to say I can change it mm -hmm. and I can go in a new direction. And, and now I, I'm absolutely, I don't just believe, I'm certain I'm going to live longer than I would have had I not had the heart attack because I'm cleaning up my whole body. I'm, you know, setting, I want to weigh 175 pounds. I want to get the lean muscular body again. You know, we're looking at my whole body to find out what is it I need to do to optimize all of my body, not just my heart? Right. So there are and probably areas we're going to discover in these tests that we never would have discovered before. I mean, that's almost guaranteed. And now we can make some decisions about how to heal them. Right. So I want to, I want to bring this around to the analogy because you're, you're an, you know, kick-ass business coach, right? Thank you. And, right. So, so the, the thing is that every process that you've taken and looked at, you hired a team, you are willing to be uncomfortable, you're willing to do absolutely anything and everything what's necessary to get to that goal of being healthy and living longer. And it's the same thing with what you do with, with people in business is that if you want to make a difference and I'm listening to you and everything that you said was really, really important with where where to go so if you're sitting here and you're saying i have a really big mission in life i i really want to make a big impact i really want to broadcast it out there how do i do that you can't do it by sitting here all by yourself and contemplating your navel and meditating you need to hire a kick-ass team have somebody help well, and, and that's exactly right five people on my team mm -hmm. You know, three of them are medically trained, but also functionally. I got a nutritionist that was a nurse, but functional medicine trained so that we could look at my diet from a functional medicine perspective. I got what may be the only cardiologist where I'm at, who's both a cardiologist and functional medicine. Right. So I had so, to research so, that. Right. So when you're hiring your team for business, you need to research it. Yeah, absolutely. And you need to hire people who are proven. Everybody on my team already had stellar credentials. They already knew how to do everything that I needed them to do. And they each specialized in, in different areas. Yet, as a whole, they were very complimentary. And everybody knew about everybody else. So it wasn't like I went to my cardiologist and, you know, I told him one of the first things I said is, hey, I'm working with Anna, who's an energy healer. I want you to know that. And, hey, he was on board. That was great. I put him in touch with my nutritionist in case she wanted to refer other patients to her. And they had a conversation about me. And then my traditional doctor, who's an MD and functional medicine, and they all had conversations with each other. And they all shared, what tests do we want? And they all made decisions about which ones I would have. And some, my regular doctor ordered uh, two of them. He ordered three of them. And, but they were all designed to complement each other because everybody on the team was working together. 
Yes, exactly. So I have somebody that helps me with copywriting. I have somebody that helps me with getting my business off the ground. That's you, JV. And then I also have people that help me with social media. So I have a team of three, and I'm hoping to get a fourth person to help me do all the editing and so on. So there's my business team, right, to help get this business going. Right. Because none, none of, you know, you can build a small practice and you can stay small. You know, as a as a healer or a coach, you can well, build a small practice. You can't build without leveraging. And one of the best ways to leverage is to leverage the knowledge of other people, but also to have them working with you. I mean, I have three different coaches because I need people working with me on different angles. Exactly. And, and, exactly. and I've been building businesses for several decades now, right? I've been mm -hmm. doing this since I was 23. And, and I had my first little business literally when I was four. But I value other people giving me their insights and helping me see my own blind spots because folks, we all have blind spots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you hire somebody who's only okay at what they do, they're only going to kind of okay see your blind spots. I would say whoever you hire as a coach, a business coach, whoever you're hiring, hire the best you can absolutely afford. And also because they're hire. going to give you the biggest return that you can get, not hiring the person. You don't go out and talk to three business coaches and go, well, this one's the cheapest. And they say they work with strategy too. Yes, but they're not going to probably work on as high a level. And it just depends on how fast and where you want to go. Exactly, exactly right. And um, the, other, the other thing I was going to also say is don't hire somebody who will tell you yes all the time. Oh, my goodness. No, <laughs> that's useless, right? <laughs> I know. I want it as honest and as brutal as possible because I need to know, you know, all of us are smart people. We can, we can talk our way out of anything. Right. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually a very good point, Anna. Is you don't want somebody who's going to buy into your story. You want somebody who's going to point, you know, going to poke holes in your story and go, yeah. Judy, listen, I'm hearing that story, but there's some disconnect and that the story and the results don't exactly match up completely. Yeah, exactly. But it's a great story. You think something might be missing, right? You want somebody who's going to, who's literally going to do that so that you can progress and and progress comes from you being able to see the things that you're not doing well or see the opportunities a lot of times someone else looking at your business can see opportunities that you can't see that happens for me every day i'm on so many meeting calls and i'm looking at lots of joint ventures and lots of ways to build conscious millionaire i was on six calls today every person was saying oh you know have you thought about doing this? And I'm going, wow, that's a good idea. I think I'm right. Right? And I always thought I, I, I went into the phone calls thinking that I had a lot of great ideas, but I came out of them with offers to connect me with people, uh, being on a big stage next year at a conference. And they said, no, let's have you next year. I think that'll be the conference for you to be. Will you be, you know, will you, will you be on our stage? So those kind of things happen because other people see possibilities that we don't even see in ourselves. Yeah, I always say that a good coach is like a tour guide. Yes. They're taking that's a you good, places that's a good analogy. That you, right that you've never been before. They're showing you a place you've never been before. You know, you can't even get it out of a book. You really need that, you know, one-to-one -one, um interaction conversation and you know, hiring a coach is the best thing anybody can do. And in fact, uh, coach, the coaching industry has grown really in big leaps and bounds. And for well, I work a lot. I work a lot with coaches and consultants. It's one of the main mm -hmm. group that I work with because I believe in what coaches and consultants are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never met a coach or consultant that didn't really make their decision to, to be in that profession or to build that kind of business except for one major thing. They wanted to make a difference in other people's lives. They're on fire to do that. Mm -hmm. What most of them are missing is how to do that. They, 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 they get the part about impact, although a lot of times that needs to be fine-tuned still, mm -hmm. but they're missing oftentimes the part about how to turn impact into big money. Mm -hmm. That's the part that they're frequently missing, and I love to help them do that. 
right? And we could do it consciously with integrity and, right. you know, with and honesty. Make, and make a difference. And honesty is so important. It's my top value. Mine and I too. always go, that's the most important thing to me for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm looking at doing joint ventures with people, I want to know their values up front. They've got to be able to make money or there's no point in us doing this. Right. But that's not my first question ever. It's kind of like my formula, make your big impact, figure out what your impact is and then figure out, don't just stop there, figure out how to turn that impact into big money. That's a second step. But the same thing with a joint venture partner. What are their values? Do they have honesty? Do they have integrity? Am I going to have to worry that they're going to sell something and it doesn't quite work or, you know, that they really don't care and their marketing is not going to reflect my values? And it's and, also, and, it's and also, can they huh? turn that into money? Right. And it's also in joint venturing. This was my experience is, are they willing to meet you halfway or do you have to go 90% of the way? And they're uh, it's a really there. important thing <laughs> to bring up, Anna, because <laughs> uh, I'm one of those people who's gone 90 a few times. And, Me too. And I've made decisions. That's not happening anymore. Yes, exactly. Right? So you, you, I think it happens more to those of us who are conscious givers. And yes. I'm a giver. I'm not, a, I've had to work so much on letting myself receive because I'm all about the giving part, but that's the clients I have as well. I have to go, you need a boundary here and you deserve to receive and you're not going to be full and complete unless you get both sides of the cycle. Right. Cause but the there are a lot loves, of us who are conscious that are more on that giving side. Right. And that universe loves a balance. And if you're right. giving, 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 then they won't receive and you won't receive. And there's an imbalance. Absolutely. Right, right. So there has to be a give and take. And that's why there should be approximately a 50 50 contribution to a program that or any kind of joint venture. And that so so not every joint venture, in fact, probably 95 to 98% of them aren't going to be any good for anybody. Because a lot of I find that a lot of joint venture people that that approach me are, are trying to ride on my coattails. And I'm sure that they're trying to ride on your coattails because you have some really big ones right now. <laughs> so what, what's the biggest lesson that you learned that to do over again that you'd pass on to somebody else? This, this may sound a little global, but it really, really is it, is that I would have spent less time dancing around the truth of who I am and gotten to accepting the truth of who I am faster because I find that that probably was my biggest impediment was not being completely honest and true to myself. And I didn't mean that I was going around lying to people, but what I mean is that honesty and integrity and authenticity are like layers. So we have one layer and we're being honest and in integrity with ourselves, but there's so much underneath that at any moment that I would have taken the deep dive deeper uh, probably f faster. Now, of course, it, I got to point out, to be fair, for everybody listening, not just myself, but to be fair, that's much easier seen in rear view. Yep. Because when we're in the present moment, we are doing our work and we think that we've done all the work but here's something, uh, a distinction that I realized about two years ago. I've actually never read an article, written an article, or, or even talked about it on my podcast, I think. But, but it's a powerful uh, distinction. I thought that to be authentic, I had to take the slow train so I could digest everything slowly. Plenty of time for it. I've now come to a conclusion that I can be authentic and take the fast train or the slow train, that that was just a decision I made that I kind of misunderstood in myself as thinking that was the only train that could be authentic. But you can take a fast train to be authentic as well. And I didn't quite get that distinction until a couple of years ago. And then I said, oh, why don't you just start taking the fast train? You're not going to give up authenticity. And that's what I was afraid of. I was afraid of, well, if I move too fast, I won't be truly authentic for myself. So I wish I, to answer this question now, I would say, I wish I'd gotten on that fast authentic train sooner. Awesome. 
So how can people get a hold of you? Well, I'd love to give, you know, because I'm about high performance. So I'd love to give you my high performer formula. It's absolutely free. Just go to consciousmillionaire.com forward slash high performer. I'll give that to you again. Go to consciousmillionaire.com forward slash high performer. And this will give you the exact steps that you need to take to maximize yourself as a high performer. So whether you're a coach or a consultant, a business owner, entrepreneur, this is the formula for you. And I would love to give it to you. Yes. And we'll have that in the show notes. So it'll be really easy for them to find. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was a total pleasure, JV, as always. Well, you know, I, I want to give my blessings to you and to everybody listening. I want to thank you for listening because Anna's got a great podcast. And I want to ask you to spread the news and give it to other people. Send it in an email. Let other people know about it because there are not that many people doing podcasts on this kind of a topic. And having worked with Anna, I can tell you she's the real deal. My heart's better, and I know that it's better because of the work that I did with her. And so spread, spread the news. Let other people know about Anna's podcast. Thank you so much, Shavy. That's so kind. Thank you for listening to Scientific Healing and for our inspiring guest, J.B. Crumb III. And to connect with him, go to ConsciousMillionaire.com. And what was that? Forward slash forward high, slash high, high performer. performer. Let's you and I connect. Go to scientifichealer.com forward slash energize me to discover more about a new, intimate, in-depth program designed to help you thrive as a healer or coach while building out your practice. Enrollment is open right now. When you're ready to learn more, I invite you into a conversation. I have reserved time for you on my calendar at scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment. This is Dr. Anastasia Chopolis. Until next time.
you can actually do simple physical manipulations on yourself to change your mental, emotional state, release blocks, and even um, release things like pain in your body. And of course, the backup to all of these techniques, the backup is to work out also the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, and then relieve the physical. Um, I have a process that does that. We go through um, one step at a time and clean up all of, so you didn't, whatever condition that you have, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, or physical, whatever condition that you have, especially if it manifested in the physical, was usually years in the making. You didn't get it overnight, years in the making. One of the ways that I work is I find out when something uh, got manifested in your body, like go back to that year and then rewrite the story, uncreate the story, redo the story. So it's as if it never happened. It's as if, <clears throat> if you imagine your life as a tree and here you are at birth and each decision that you make will create a different branch, right? So you have all these branches of possibilities and you're ending up somewhere along the branch. And by doing energy work, it's as if you did not make that decision and instead you made a different decision and you end up on another branch. So that's the way I view energy healing with regards to, to whatever your life is now. And the great thing is that we are infinite beings of light, powerful beings of light, and we can change our history and we can rewrite things and we can create whatever life we want. And I'm ready to have a conversation with you if that's what you'd like to have in your life, either learn it for yourself or to um, have me help you with it. So I have my contact information is scientifichealer.com forward slash contact or scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment. So you can either write me or have a conversation with me and I always answer the, you know, I always answer whatever queries come through. And I do it personally because I'm very interested in hearing out, hearing what you would like to hear.